the application in this lab is vulnerable to a CLTE attack. And we have to confirm that CLTE vulnerability via differential responses. So the first thing we'll do is detect that CLTE vulnerability by sending the first payload right here. And if we get back a timeout from the backend server as a response, that's a very strong indication that this lab or this endpoint we're targeting is vulnerable to a CLTE attack. And the reason for that is because if we send this request, if the front end server is using content length and we've defined a content length of six, it will only forward six bytes of content to the backend server, which is the tree, the carriage return line feed, because that is one, two, three bytes, and then ABC, four, five, six bytes in length. So when that arrives at the backend server, if it's using transfer encoding chunked, it will read in a chunk size of three, followed by the chunk ABC. But then it's waiting for that next chunk size to come in or a terminating chunk. But because that next chunk size or the terminating chunk doesn't come, the backend server will time out the request and send back a timeout as a response to us. And that's a very strong indication if we see that timeout, this lab or this endpoint is vulnerable to a CLTE attack. And all we have to do to confirm that CLTE vulnerability is through differential responses. And differential responses are just a pair of requests, an attack request and a normal request, where we generate this or we send this attack request which arrives at the front end server, which is using content length. And we set the real content length for our request body here, because that ensures that our entire request body is forwarded on by the front end server to the backend server. The backend server, if it's using transfer encoding chunk, it will read in the terminating chunk first, and it will think that our request has ended here, but it is then poisoned by this prefix here, the get request for a resource that doesn't exist, using HTTP 1.1, followed by the xignore x header, but not followed by a new line. And that's very important because when we send our normal request, and the normal request can be anything. In our case, we're going for a simple get request for the front page using HTTP 1.1, using a valid host header. That's sent to the front end. The front end, because this is a valid request, forwards it on to the backend server. Now the backend server is already poisoned with this prefix, the get request for something that doesn't exist with the xignore x header. And our get request for the front page is appended right after the xignore header. But the get request for the front page has a new line here. So the host header goes to the next line and this request in total, so the get request for something that doesn't exist, the xignore header with xget here, this is just gonna be ignored by the backend server and a valid host header. That's a valid request in total. But because this resource doesn't exist, the backend server is going to reply with a 404 not found. And that confirms to us that this endpoint is in fact vulnerable to a CLTE attack. Now, the reason that it's very important that you don't add a new line after X ignore X is because you want to ensure that this get slash request or this get slash for the front page is appended right after. If, it, if you add a carriage return line feed here and it's added to the next line, that would cause an issue because then the backend reads in this request and it sees that there's two request methods, a get for the resource that doesn't exist and a get for the front page on separate lines. That's not a valid request and it would reply or send back a response saying invalid request. And that's why we set this or we don't set a new line here to ensure that we don't have a double get request with its own URI path. Now, it's also important to note that the reason this is called a differential response is because our normal request, the get request for the front page, normally this is a valid request, we'd expect to receive back a 200 okay from the backend server. But because the backend server is poisoned with this prefix for a resource that doesn't exist, we get back a 404. And that differs from the 200 okay that we'd normally expect. And that's why it's called a differential response. So now let's see what that looks like in the lab. I'm gonna switch to burp and go to proxy and HTTP history and grab the get slash request for the root endpoint and send it to repeater and switch to repeater. Oh, uh, you can see here that we're using HTTP 2. The version of request smuggling that we're using only works with HTTP 1.1. So we're gonna to go to the inspector window here on the right to request attributes and downgrade the HTTP protocol to HTTP 1.1. And I'm gonna send the request just to make sure that we get back a 200 okay to confirm that the front end supports HTTP 1.1. And it does, so we can continue. The next thing I'm gonna do is change the request method to post. And then I'm gonna delete unnecessary headers. That's not absolutely necessary, but I like to do it because it cleans things or it trims things up quite a bit and it makes things easier to follow along. So anything up from the content type, 
and underneath the host header, I'm going to delete. It's also handy to go here and show non-printable characters when you're doing request smuggling, because it allows you to see carriage return line feeds. And that's always handy when you're doing request smuggling. Now, to detect a CLTE vulnerability, you also want to be able to control the content length yourself and not let Burp update it automatically. So make sure you turn that off in the detection phase. And then next thing I'm going to do is set the content length to 6. And then on the next line, I'm going to add a transfer encoding chunk header. And then in our request body, you want to make sure that you have a carriage return line feed after the request headers to separate it from the request body. I'm going to send a chunk of size 3, ABC, followed by a carriage return line feed, followed by the invalid chunk size X, followed by another carriage return line feed. Then I'm going to send that request. And you can see that the response has already taken a long time to get back. And eventually, we'll get a timeout. And that's a very strong indication that this endpoint, the post, the slash endpoint, is vulnerable to a CLTE attack. Now let's confirm that vulnerability by using differential responses. So this will become our attack request. I'm going to rename this tab to attack request. I'm going to go back to proxy and send another copy of the get slash request to repeater, switch to repeater, and that will become our normal request. I'm also going to downgrade the HTTP protocol to HTTP 1.1 again by going to the inspector window and clicking HTTP 1, just to make sure that it's the same as our attack request. And then go back to the attack request. And I'm going to turn on update content length automatically again, because we want to make sure that the front end forwards the entire request body over to the backend server. And then I'm going to delete the body that we had here before. And instead, we're going to send a terminating chunk to indicate to the backend server that the request has ended here. And then we're going to send our prefix, our smuggled request. So that's a request for something that doesn't exist. In the example, I had trolls 404, and then HTTP 1.1, followed by a new line, followed by the xignore x header, but not followed by a new line. And the reason for that is, and I explained that in the example as well, is if you pick your normal request, the way it would be appended, the way we have it here, would be like this where the get request is appended right after the xignore x header, and it avoids that double request or that double get request method here. And that's good. That's what we want. Otherwise, if we have a carriage return line feed here, it will be appended like this. And then you have two get request methods with their own URI path, and that's an invalid request. So you want to make sure that there's no carriage return line feed here. And then I'm going to send this attack request. You can see that the content length was automatically updated to 41. We get a 200 OK. And then when we send our normal request, we get a 404 not found. And if we go back to the lab and refresh the page, you can see, congratulations, you've solved the lab. I hope this was helpful to you, and thank you for watching.